So let's talk about how do we use the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. So for example, a, we have 2x times x plus 3 is equal to negative 1. And we need to use the quadratic formula in order to solve this. First, the quadratic equation is right, or the quadratic formula is right over here. It reads x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. It's a really long order of operations type formula. So essentially, we just need to plug into this formula, simplify it in order to get our answer. The way that we know how to plug into the formula is this. If you notice this formula, we have a's, b's, and c's in this formula. That's what we need to plug in for. a, b, and c come from your quadratic equation. A quadratic equation should look something like this ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, where a is the coefficient of your x squared term, b is the coefficient of your x to the first power term, and c is your constant. So you should always have an a, b, and c for any quadratic equation that you're given. So when you're given a problem like we are here, where we have to use the quadratic formula in order to solve, there's a couple of things that we need to do first. First things first, we need to simplify the equation. We need to make sure that it's in proper quadratic form, which means it needs to look like this equation over here. X squared term, X to the first power term, your constant is set equal to zero. If we take a look at the equation that we have, it's not exactly set up the appropriate way. It's not set equal to zero. We have some multiplication going on here. So there's a little bit of cleanup that we need to do first. If there's any multiplication in your equation, you need to take care of that. Any distributive property, combining like terms, anything like that needs to be taken care of first. And your equation needs to be set equal to zero. So if it's not set equal to zero, that term, whatever's on the other side, needs to get moved over. Everything needs to be on one side of the equation, and then it's going to be set equal to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do here is actually take care of this multiplication. We have 2x times x plus 3. So we're going to take this 2x and distribute it to the x plus 3. 2x times x gives us 2x squared. 2x times 3 gives us 6x. Also, this 1, we need to move this over to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and say plus 1 plus 1. So where it cancels on the right-hand side, and the right-hand side is now set equal to 0, and this one, plus 1 we moved over to the left where everything's on one side of our equation and it's set equal to zero. This is proper quadratic form. Once, it, once it's in proper quadratic form, you can label what a, b, and c is. a is equal to 2, since it's your coefficient of your x squared term. b is equal to 6, since it's the coefficient of the x to the first power term. And c is equal to 1, since it's your constant. And now that we know what a, b, and c are, we can plug those into our formula and we can simplify. So plugging into our formula here, we're solving for x. This is going to equal negative b. Well, our b is going to be 6, so that's a negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 6 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 1. And all of this is going to get divided by 2 times a, which is 2. So now we just need to be careful in our simplifying here to get to our answer. So that here in the beginning here in our numerator, we have negative 6. That's going to stay the same. Plus or minus. We typically want to work on simplifying underneath the radical here. So the first thing we have is 6 squared. That's 6 times 6, which is 36 minus 4 times 2 times 1. We could go ahead and take care of all of that multiplication. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 1 is an 8. And that is all over 2 times 2, which is 4. Let's go ahead and simplify what's under the radical even further because we have the square root of 36 minus 8. Well, 36 minus 8 is 28. Okay. All right, so it's typically at this point where I like to focus on simplifying our radical. So if we take a look at our radical here, let me go ahead and pull that out, the square root of 28. We need to simplify this. 
And if you remember when it comes to simplifying radicals, we simplify radicals by breaking them apart into a multiplication using our perfect squares. Our perfect squares are numbers like 4, 9, 16, so and so. 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, and you can keep making your list. What we want to do is we want to see, can we use one of these numbers to break up 28? So for example, 28 is the same thing as 4 times 7. All right, and the product rule for radicals says that I can take the square root of 28 and break it up to the square root of 4 times the square root of 7, since 4 times 7 is 28. And I want to break it up this way because I want to use a perfect square because that allows me to simplify that perfect square. The square root of 4 is a 2, right, since 2 times 2 is 4. Now the square root of 7 cannot be broken up, so that just drops down. That means that the square root of 28 is equal to uh, 2 square roots of 7. So this is going to look like negative 6 plus or minus 2 square roots of 7 over 4. The only, the only thing left to do here is to check to see does our fraction, can our problem be simplified any further. Now we can't add this number with this radical together. There's no multiplication. There's not a lot going on left that we can do. The only thing that we can do here is simplify out our coefficients here. If you take a look, we have three terms in this problem. One, two, three. And if each term has a common factor, we can simplify by dividing out that common factor. What I mean by that is a six, a two, and a four. These are all even numbers. And because they're all even numbers, we can divide out a factor of 2 from each one of these. It's literally saying divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, taking each thing in your fraction and dividing it by 2. When we do that, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Move over the plus or minus. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that cancels. So we just have a square root of 7. And in our denominator, 4 divided by 2 is 2. You can only do this if everything in your problem has that factor in common. If we would have had this 6 and this 4 here, but we wouldn't have had this 2, we could not do that. It has to have it in common with everything. But since we did have it in common with everything, we were able to divide everything by 2 to get to our final answer here. So our final answer is a negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 7 over 2. So negative 3 plus the square root of 7 over 2, negative 3 minus the square root of 7 over 2. Let's move on to the next example. For example B, we have 3x minus 2 times x minus 1 is equal to negative 3. So when it comes to using the quadratic formula to solve, first things first, we need to make sure that our equation is in proper quadratic form. So everything needs to be simplified and moved over to one side of the equation, and it needs to be set equal to zero. So our equation is definitely not set equal to zero, and we have some multiplication that we need to clean up first before we do anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of this multiplication by using the FOIL method to multiply. FOIL method says first times first, 3x times x is 3x squared. O is the outside, so that's negative 1 times 3x, which gives us negative 3x. I is the inside, negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. And L is last, negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. And that's all equal to negative 3. So a little bit more cleanup. We need to combine our middle terms here. The negative 3x and negative 2x are like terms that need to be combined. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to give us 3x squared. Negative 3x minus 2x gives us negative 5x. And what we need to do, remember that this needs to be set equal to 0. So this negative 3, we need to add that to both sides to where this negative 3 plus 3 zeroes out on our right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we had a 2. We added the 3 to it, which leaves us with a 5. So it looks like everything is simplified. Everything's over on one side of the equation. It's set equal to zero, which means we can label our A, B, and C. A is equal to three, B is equal to negative five, and C is equal to a positive five. So that when we plug that into our quadratic formula right over here, negative B, negative, and then B is negative five, plus or minus the square root of 
b squared, so b is negative 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 5, all over 2a, so 2 times 3. Doing some cleanup here, negative, negative 5, that is the double negative rule that cancels out to a positive 5, plus or minus the square root of, so let's clean up the inside here. Negative 5 squared, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, minus this multiplication here, 4 times 3 times 5. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 5 is 60. And that's all over 2 times 3, which is 6. Uh, cleaning up the subtraction under the radical, so dropping everything else down, uh, 25 minus 60 is a negative 35. Everything else is just going to drop down. Um, now, typically at this point, I take a look at our radical and I check to see, can our radical be simplified any further? Um, Typically, when we're simplifying a radical, we like to break it up using our perfect squares. These are the first of our perfect squares. So 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and so on. And we need to look at that list, and we need to think, can we take 35 and break it up into multiplication using one of these numbers? Is 35 4 times something, 9 times something, 16 times something? But I can't think of a number that's going to fit, so it can't simplify that way. I also see that this is the square root of negative 35. Now, typically, we don't want negatives underneath our radical. Uh, that leaves us with uh, an error or imaginary numbers. We also do have a rule that says this. The square root of a negative 1 is equal to i. So that's all we're, all we're going to do for this one here. If we take a look at the square root of 35, or the square root of negative 35, that's the same thing as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 35. And we break it up this way because we want to take care of this negative. We want to get rid of that negative underneath the radical. And we do that by pulling out the negative and changing it to an i because we know that the square root of negative 1 is an i. So this simply becomes i square roots of 35. The i just signifies this negative here. So I'm going to put that back into my problem. We have 5 plus or minus i square roots of 35 over 6. And that's all that we can do with this problem here because we can't simplify the radical any further. All of our adding, subtracting, all of that kind of thing has already been simplified. We do not have a common factor because we have a 5, a 1, and a 6. So those don't have anything in common. So we are done with this problem. Our two solutions are 5 plus i square roots of 35 over 6 and 5 minus i square roots of 35 over 6. Otherwise, that's it for this problem.